If you track their landing, you should be able to guess what kind of direction they might take to loot. And with that, you can just prepare for a surprise engagement. What's going on, guys? This is your motivation guy. That's right, the one who is standing in your corner, man. The one who is rooting for you. The one who believes in you. Your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. I hope you guys are doing great. Back again with another video. I'm going to be going over five ways that you outplay better opponents in season three. Who wants to get the edge over better opponents? I know you do. Come on. Of course, none of us enjoy fighting against sweaty players. You know, the guys who build faster than you can even keep up. So all you do is just sit and you wait to get danced on. But no longer, guys, are we going to be in fear? Because today, I'm going to be showing you how you can use simple concepts such as positioning, loot paths, and even some mind games you probably haven't even seen before to beat those sweats back to the lobby. So make sure you drop a like on the video and subscribe with post notifications turned on for more tips and tricks. Also, let me know in the comments what your favorite item is of the new season. All right, Bunch of Crunch Army, you already know what time it is. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to sit back. Come on, say with me. Relax and grab some of my favorite candy. What is that? It's that Bunch of Crunch. And let's get this going. I'm hyped. All right, man, getting into this first thing that you can do to be better players is learn and practice early game loot paths. I mean, sure, you could just pick a random drop and just go in with no plan. <laughs> but with the proper loot path, you're going to have superior weapons. You're going to have more shields. You're going to have higher mats. And although learning loot paths can take a bit of time, the results are that you're going to instantly have an advantage every time you land at that spot. Okay, so if you need convincing, just take a look at any pro player out there. Nearly all of them have some sort of specific loot path that they take every game. And they're always being refined, right? It's crucial for them because at a pro level, everyone's mechanics are just pretty similar. So to get the upper hand in early game fights, they have to rely on looting quickly. They have to rely on, you know, safety and in a way that gives them the advantage. But even if you're not a pro, you can use the same concepts yourself. Okay, to start, pick a landing spot, preferably one you're already comfortable with, then spend time exploring it in the battle lab. Find out where everything of value is located, such as chests, floor loot, slurp kegs, you know, produce boxes, and whatever gives a lot of materials. Using all of that, come up with where you're going to land and one or two paths that you can take to maximize the loot that you get. Alternatively, you know, you can look at pro players and really copy their loot paths or even just search for videos on them. We have one on our channel that goes over some incredible arena drop spots that you have to know. So check out that video here. And I mean, like right here. OK, but at the same time, just know that you might have to vary your path game to game, you know, depending on specific circumstances, right? Like whether you're contested or not or how far the safe zone actually is. All in all, whether or not that you have an excellent loot path, you know, it can make or break your early game fight. So there is no doubt that you should spend some time learning one. But this next tip is so huge, man, when it comes to defeating better players, and that's to prioritize advantageous positions. During every stage of the match, you want to maintain a position in such a way that you'll have the edge when you get into a fight. But what exactly is an advantageous position? Good question. Well, being on the high ground is the main one we all know, right? But a good position can also be as simple as being in the safe zone or hidden in a spot that you can just do a surprise attack from. For instance, okay, so let's just say that it's just you and one other player dropping at Pleasant Park. If you track their landing, you should be able to guess what kind of direction they might take to loot. And with that, you can just prepare for a surprise engagement. Get on top of the rooftop of a house, then wait for them to approach. Once they're somewhat close, you just beam them. And as long as you're landing a few hits, the fight is already in your favor. However, doing this outside of your landing spot is a lot tougher, but what you can do to keep your edge during the mid game is rotate to the next safe zone as soon as possible. Since most players tend to rotate at the last second, you're going to be less likely to run into them this way. And with so many rotation methods this season, like whirlpools and choppers, there shouldn't really be a problem as long as you plan ahead. But if for some reason you have to run it, take any high ground routes along the way. Trust me, that way you're going to be well positioned just in case. And when it comes to the late game, a fantastic rule of thumb is to stay ahead of the storm. You want to be in the safe zone or as close to it as possible. This is where mobility items like peppers, the grappler and launch pads really, really come in handy. So always try to dedicate at least one slot to mobility in your matches. You may not be used to it yet, but that's just how the season meta is going to be. 
Okay guys, the next tip for you guys is to always capitalize on your opponent's mistakes. Obviously this is easier said than done, I know. Since, you know, if you don't know what mistakes they're making, you can't really take advantage of them. So I'm gonna go over a few common ones and what we should do. The first one being hasty edit plays. Many mid to high level players tend to instantly edit and just go for a shotgun shot as soon as they see you pickaxe in their wall. To combat this, bait out the edit by swinging once, then pull out a shotgun or SMG. Aim at them and just wait for the edit so you can just fire. Another way to combat these edit plays is to replace builds with weapons instead. This is perfect because if your opponent tries to edit on you, you're already shooting in their direction, so most players won't even attempt the edit play while you're taking their walls. Perfect. Though, the only tricky aspect is timing the piece placement, but that's nothing a bit of practice and creative can't fix. All right, man, the next mistake that you should be on the lookout for is your opponent dropping down from height. Anytime you've absolutely lost high ground in a battle, the first move you should always default to is boxing up somewhere low or mid ground. At this point, your opponent will drop down. If they don't, you can always just start pickaxing their builds, but just be careful not to get shot. Either way, the idea is to use your opponent dropping down as an opportunity to take height yourself. Okay, pay attention to the sound of them dropping, and when you hear it, either edit out the back or out the top of your box and ramp up for a nice little high ground take. The last mistake that you should watch out for is your opponent running out of mats. All right, you know, this this isn't something that you can't figure out with 100% accuracy, but it is a sign you can watch out for. Anytime you see your opponent switch materials during a long fight, it's typically an indicator that they're running low on mats. With that, you could just change up your playstyle. Instead of trying to finish the fight, keep your distance and just try to drain the rest of their mats first. Then, once they're out, it should be an easy finish from height. Just keep in mind that this is typically only going to occur during the early game when players don't have a lot of mats. All right, these next two tips are so important, so you better not go anywhere, stay right here. But first, if you do feel like this season has been a struggle, you need to have a talk with our pro guys coaches, all right? They're absolute experts, man, and they're great at the game and can really help with whatever problems might be holding you back. Link is in the description, so make sure you check it out. Okay, the next thing that you wanna do against better players is to be unpredictable in box fights. You might be saying, well, duh, like everybody knows that. And yeah, you're probably right. This is a pretty obvious piece of advice, but you actually would be surprised. Many of us just don't think about how our moves are being anticipated. We do the same thing over and over or make plays that are so predictable that we end up getting read like a book. So what you should be doing instead is trying to confuse your opponent any chance that you get. For instance, when we go to wall replace an opponent that's boxed up, most of us put down a reverse stair and just start swinging. But once your opponent sees those stairs placed, they're going to know you're dropping there. So instead, place two stairs before dropping down on one. Your opponent is going to be less likely to know which ramp you're dropping on. And it might just be the difference in you taking their wall. All right, another tactic when looking to replace builds is to switch up which pieces you're hitting. Like, start with the wall hit, then immediately ramp up and just hit their cone. Then edit your stairs and hit the wall again. Or even just play around the corner and just switch between hitting two different walls. Basically, you're just trying to play slow and keep your opponent on their toes. But just don't be too slow or else <laughs> you're just giving your opponent time to make a move. All right, so one more thing that you can do on the defensive end is juke your opponent with multiple edits. So for instance, rather just going for a simple right hand edit, you can first edit the wall to your left open. And once your opponent is misdirected by that, you can then make the edit you usually would and just go for the kill. Overall, these are just a few examples of how you guys can play unpredictably in box fights. So keep the idea in mind and you're bound to discover more. All right, finally, ladies and gentlemen, the last tip we have for beating better players is to initiate your fights wisely. One-on-one -on -one fights in Fortnite basically tend to boil down to who has the bigger starting advantage. That primarily means damage dealt and who's on high ground, but can also include vital things like your loadout and how much health you actually have. So what you should be doing before initiating every fight is thinking about your starting advantage. First, access your health. Is it full? If not, you need to be careful of taking fights against any players whose health you don't know because they might have a starting advantage already. Second, look at your loadout. If it's lacking in any regard, you might want to think twice before opening fire, but generally, you know, you don't have to worry about this outside the early game. And third, what kind of position are you in? Do you have high ground or easy access to it? Is the safe zone far? Are there any other opponents nearby that can third party? These are all things that we have to consider before engaging.
And if all looks clear, you're good to initiate. Either start things off with a sniper or some rifle shots, but if you're using a rifle, try to get within effective range before firing. That means don't try to shoot 100 meters away because at most you're gonna land one shot and just give yourself up and it's over. <laughs> And since you're so far away, you can't capitalize on anything. So instead, creep up closer and look for an opportunity where you think you can land a more decent spray. After your shots hit, the first thing your opponent will probably do is box up, at which point you should just keep spraying at the walls. This can prevent any minis or big pots getting popped as you close the gap. Once you get close, that's when you can deploy all the other tips that we talked about in this video, like pressuring builds with weapons, waiting for mistakes to exploit, and really being unpredictable in your approach. Do it right, and you're going to eliminate even the toughest of opponents. All right, guys, we got to do a recap before I let you go. Here we go. The first thing that you should do is learn a good loot path, not only to make your loadouts more stacked, but to generate a feeling of familiarity when taking early game fights. That's helped me a ton. That's helped my game and took my game to the next level when I had a consistent spot, consistent loot path. It's amazing. All right. Next, always be conscious of your position. Start fights from hidden or high ground positions. All right. And always make sure to rotate early enough so you don't get caught in the storm. Okay, but when you do get into fights, you need to capitalize on your opponent's mistakes and most common ones being materials running low, hasty edit plays, and dropping down from height. Also, try to be as unpredictable as possible in your fights. Don't go for the same move over and over again, but instead, switch it up. And lastly, avoid taking fights where you don't have a starting advantage. That means a lack of opening shots, no high ground, or just a lousy loadout. All right, guys, once again, this is your motivation guy. That's right. The one who is standing in your corner, the one who is rooting for you, the one who believes in you, your motivation guy, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. Make sure to connect with me on my Insta at your motivation guy. I want to see you guys be successful, not only in this game, but also in life. Make me proud. And I know we're going to be doing uh, one of our stories in the future on one of you guys that is a part of our pro guys family. All right, I really hope you guys found these tips useful. If you did, remember to give the video a like and subscribe with post notifications turned on. All right, Bunch of Crunch Army. I'll see you next time. Peace.